Hello. Uh, so yeah, my name is Ed Ruiz. I'm a PhD student. I'm happy to talk about a project called DBverse. Um, so this project is motivated by several challenges and bottlenecks that I've faced uh, when analyzing scientific data as part of my PhD research. And um, scientific data uh, is challenging to work with for several reasons. Um, it comes in unique shapes and file type, uh, file formats, data types, um, which is not your traditional standard data frame. It's often in heterogeneous multimodal uh, formats. So you have like multiple types of files that are often uh, needed to be analyzed. And increasingly these data, data, scientific data sets are becoming like larger than memory. So it's difficult to use existing tools. And another major, major challenge is that various tools are often required to process and analyze these scientific data. And these tools often lack interoperability and may be incompatible with all of the data that a scientist needs to analyze for an experiment. So how can we develop better approaches uh, to analyze scientific data is the guiding question of this project, which is why I developed uh, DBverse. And so DBverse uh, consists of composable database libraries that are built on DuckDB and the R programming language Dedicated libraries provide methods for analyzing sparse and dense matrices, spatial geometries, and genomic sequence files in a DuckDB database. These libraries are designed to scale to larger than memory um, uh, scientific data, and they're also compatible with a wide array of scientific data sources shown on the right, including domain-specific file formats, as well as in-memory objects from common R packages like Matrix, SF, and Terra for those of you who do things in R. So unlike other object relational mapping frameworks, uh, DBverse adopts intuitive syntax, which emulates existing packages. This makes it easy to use DBverse libraries right out of the box without even knowing SQL. So for example, shown here are three methods for computing subsetted row names, call names, and dimension names, uh, or dimensions that are identical between an in-memory matrix shown on the left and a database representation of a matrix shown on the right via DB matrix. To achieve this, we implemented generics from existing scientific packages as SQL queries that can be run in DuckDB. DBverse methods adopt familiar syntax from existing packages with underlying implementations written in the dplyr package, such as uh, shown here in these dplyr verbs, which are transpiled to DuckDB compatible SQL via dbplyr and lazily evaluated in a DuckDB database. So to illustrate the performance benefits of DBverse libraries, I'd like to showcase a few benchmarks from each package, starting with the DB matrix. In this benchmark, we performed several matrix operations, including matrix transposes and sparse to dense matrix densification, and a large, with a large sparse matrix with 30,000 rows and 1 million columns. We observe that DB matrix outperforms a competing approach from the HDF5 matrix R package by up to an order of magnitude and is able to perform matrix operations that are impossible to run with in-memory sparse matrices due to memory failures. To illustrate the performance benefits of the DB spatial library, which largely relies on the DuckDB spatial extension, uh, we performed uh, spatial intersections between increasing number of polygons representing cells in a tissue region of interest. And we've observed that DB spatial outperforms a competing in-memory method from the SF package up to 25X. And finally, to illustrate the performance of DB sequence, we benchmark the runtime performance of filtering a 28 gigabyte BAM file um, versus SAM tools, uh, which is an established library for processing genomic files. And basically we observe similar performance improvements and the ability to perform certain queries that are impossible to run using this existing method. So in summary, uh, DuckDB has several advantages for scientific data analysis. Um, all of the good things that have already been talked about, including now the dual execution, not hybrid, hybrid execution, that you can uh, take advantage of with Mother Duck. And uh, we just released it today. So if you want to check it out, um, you can look more, uh, look up DBverse. Um, some limitations before I close, uh, it's currently only compatible with R, but we plan to support other languages in the future and are open to collaborations. 
Um, we're also excited to explore UW Data Mosaic and um, the spatial extension raster support for large images. We also would like to explore uh, adopting or inheriting DuckFlyer um, and much more. So thanks everyone who's helped out and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, very nice. Uh, are there any questions? Yes, I can see, I can see your arm. <laughs> Thank you, Hans. Hi, Eddie. Uh, so there's a lot of pipelines and work that goes into bioinformatics right there, GAC, and not, uh, another one right there. Uh, have you tested this against any uh, current pi pipelines and what do you think this does particularly better? Is it just for future, because the scientific advancements are going to keep keep going. We're going to get new technologies. Uh, will this uh, will this be able to keep up? Um, thank you. Um, I, I I would hope so. Um, not really sure. Um, you know, if there's specific examples that you have in mind, but um, you know, we're we're, we've, we're definitely working towards like, um, you know, building out. Um, you know, support for you know, new types of data or if there is uh, specific workflows that you have in mind, um, um, definitely like something we can further benchmark as well. Yeah. And maybe discuss uh, after the talks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Well, if that's not the case, then uh, let's thank Edgar again.